Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, where we say that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And today we have our co-adventure guide is Doug Berry, and and he has a, one of the names of his ministry is Radex, which comes from the same word we get the word radical from, which is means the root can mean something. Radix can mean the very root. Radical can mean something that's been set free when you think about uh, the, the chemical environment and things like that. So we got the right man in the house to talk to us about getting radical for Jesus. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, everybody. This is Bear Wozniak. We're coming to you from the beach in Waikiki. We almost got swept away yesterday. We had torrential rains, uh, but now the tourists are all happy because the, 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 that it rained all night and it's going to be sunny all day, so we're excited. Uh, Cindy and I got some surfing in yesterday, and I got to go golfing with my oldest son here in Hawaii. If you're Kamaaina, if you're of the land here and you... Uh, and you're as old as I am. You get to golf for one dollar uh, golf hole, so nine dollars for nine holes. So we had a great we had a great time yesterday. Hey, we have with us today Doug Barry, uh, Doug from BattleReady.com, right? That's your website, correct? Yeah. BattleReadyStrong.com. Yeah, we want to be Battle Ready Strong. Battle Ready Strong. Yeah, right. I just I just remember, dude. Doug, when we were, I was starting, I'd, I'd flown out to Florida, gone to a, my first men's conference. This is probably almost 10 years ago. And uh, I come back and I tell the local guys here, we got to start a That Man Is You group, you know? And this guy, Ron Gokenauer, is, was kind of like behind it all. And we got the bishop's green light. And we started doing that. And then he says, you got to see this newsletter I got, this thing called Battle Ready Strong from this guy, Doug Berry. And I, my ministry had just kind of, Boom! Just like it wasn't there, and then it was boom. It just happened, nice. and uh, and uh, and I flew out, and I went, and I and I came to see you, and it was just yeah, that, that was awesome. You just <laughs> called, hey, I'm in town. I, okay, <laughs> I haven't met you, and and that was a great visit, man. We we just we got along great, and you were um, this Hawaiian surfing guy into <laughs> martial arts, and and uh, you were walking around our camp uh, situation. Yeah. There. Building your it. obstacle course <laughs> yeah the obstacle course in the backyard yeah yeah that was pretty cool so no it was it was great yeah it's been great friendship with you these years man yeah well you know i know what it's like i, I when i'm do, being involved in this ministry towards men when another man steps up to into the breach like that or steps up to the front lines whether in a very visual way or whatever when another man steps up it just feels so good doesn't it when there's another oh, yeah yeah yeah. I mean, you think of any situation, you know, combat, uh, you know, scenario. I mean, I've never been in combat, you know, but guys out there who are listening or watching who have been know that you're on the front lines of any kind of a fight or let's just say something less, less extreme, like a sporting event and you're down, you know, you're hurting and someone steps up and says, hey, great play time. Here we go. And you shift the momentum. But it takes those guys to yeah. dig deep, hard times to dig deep. I would say you're only at your best when you're at your worst that's when you find out really what the character is that you have mm. or don't have mm. so yeah we, we've got to step up especially in these times i mean things have gotten dramatically more intensified with regards to the battle and we have got to be stepping up more and more having each other's back and just engaging in this fight yeah you know the thing is we have that kind of that thing in common of, of our love for the martial arts by the way my son joshua wozniak is a, a ninja black belt he's he's doing the production of the show and my other son shane yes. who does the tv show primarily uh the person who does the TV show, Joshua, works in that area too. Both trained in the ninja arts, and each of my my other two children went halfway to that because mm -hmm. I told them you got to be able to defend yourself. You yeah, know, you, you know. So you've trained in the martial arts, and your children too, or? Oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I started when I was twelve, and just various forms over the years, and really picked up a lot from a buddy of mine who um, he's been thirty three years Navy EOD. He's retired now, but I learned a lot from him. So I mean, you're, you're talking about combative. Mark, you're not, you're not talking about so much the art part as just the kind of self-defense, tr truly yeah, self-defense. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I started with Taekwondo. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I went through all of that. And then and then I, I'm hanging out with my buddy, and he says, okay, look, here's what we're going to do. We go into the backyard, 
and he's got a few friends with him and he says okay i want you to pretend these three guys in front of you this guy's got a, a knife he's got a baseball bat and he's got a he's got a rock and they're coming at you at the same time what would you do and before <laughs> i could even say anything he looked at his friends and he said go and they attacked me yeah <laughs> I'm on the ground upside down you know and and it was one of those reality checks where he said, you know, all your form moves as you nice mean, as uh, they can. What was that called? That that, that form number one, you know? The, you yeah. Know the, yeah. I, I don't even remember all you, that. Did you stand there and do that? And then. And, yeah. And, it's all these. Yeah. And, and he says, look, that's not going to happen if you're walking through a parking lot and two or three guys jump you. You know, it has to. It's much more of a Krav Maga style where you're just engaging right away. And you're learning how to, you know, a, you know, a shot to the to the neck to to, you know, knock him unconscious in one move. And, mm -hmm. you know, how do you how do you defend and protect, get to a place of safety? Just uh, basically evaluate the situation, assess it, have your head on the swivel and be ready to engage. Well, first of all, evaluate yeah. the situation. Most people don't even know there's a situation. D exactly. Right? There's no situational awareness. Right. That's it. And that is really like rule number one. I do a lot of basic self-defense type instruction and, and talks. And it's the first rule is your situational awareness has everything to do. As one guy says, it's the first it's the two seconds before the fight begins that matter. Right. And if those two seconds you you sense what's happening and you can even get those hands up into a posture to protect defend, whether it's a diffuse posture or fight posture, those two seconds are well, everything. That, that, the, the diffuse posture is a fight posture. It is, and actually, yeah, you got your yeah. hands up. They're maybe open, but they're ready for. You, to yeah, fight. you can yeah. still engage there. Yeah, and and so that's the stuff that that I just I started taking much more seriously, and that affected me more, even in the spiritual battle, because mm -hmm. you realize in the spiritual fight, you wake up in the morning, you put your feet on the floor, getting out of that bed, and and those demons are ready to pounce on you, and you've right. got to have that situational awareness, head on a swivel from the moment you are awake. And you you and I are so much we're so much alike like that. I mean, we trained in very similar. We've combative. I mean, I started Taekwondo, um, I can Tang Soo Do, Aikido, all the Do's, and then I trained in Ninjutsu, <laughs> and I did some Gracie style. But um, uh, once a week we were training Gracie, and I just remember my neck hurt all the time. You know, but, <laughs> um, but you know, I'm, you know that when they they, they they start you out with you being in a neck a neck grip and then trying to get out. But I remember the one time we went to a restaurant and we both tried to sit in the same chair. Do you remember that? I do. I do. Yeah, we both wanted the same <laughs> alpha position, right? You want to see yeah. where you for situ the corner chair where you can see the whole room and no one's going to yeah. come up behind you. You are watching the doors. Yeah. yeah. And so the thing yeah. is so interesting that's it's not, we don't even think about it, and then we realize well I'm with Doug and he's with me so we've got each other's back which is even yeah. better yeah. in a sense right you. Well yeah and and that's something that is very, it, it, that's a great thing to think about it is that you know who you are associating with and who you're spending time with who you're hanging out with who you mm -hmm. choose as your battle buddies basically are they the type of men you know this is for men it could be for any christian though are you are you dealing with the people that watch your back spiritually mm -hmm. and physically and so yeah i felt perfectly comfortable with you in that situation because we're we're, we're going to have a head on a swivel we've got the the 180 degrees on each mm -hmm. side so we're covered 360 then yeah. That's who you want for your battle buddy. You want somebody that you can step into a conflict or potential or anywhere, but the head's on the swivel and you know that they're there. Spiritually, it's the same thing. You know, the Book of Sirach talks about you have a thousand acquaintances and only one confidant out of that thousand acquaintances. That confidant should be a confidant. You mean all my Facebook friends aren't my <laughs> confidant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. They're not. <laughs> But that's the thing is to know, like I can call, I could contact you anytime I know anywhere. You're in Hawaii, I'm in Texas. You could contact me, you could text me, text, and you'd know, hey, you know, Doug, I need some prayer right now. Hey, Bear, I'm struggling, I'm getting my, my tail beat right now by the demons, can you pray for me? And we mm -hmm. know the other would in a heartbeat. And, and I've, got a, I've got a number of, of buddies in this line of work, and you do too, from doing this type of ministry work that you know you can rely on and spiritually, they're there to engage in that fight with you. And so you need that physically and spiritually. You need people who will be there for you in, in both both realms. Well, you know, I, I've never really shown this, and this is kind of a model of a shofar, you know, yeah. the ram's horn. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, think of the book of Nehemiah, you know, when they would be build, they were building, rebuilding the walls while one man worked, another man would guard him with his spear and his uh, shield. And when there would be an attack on one part of the wall, they would blow the, the, the ram's horn and the other men would come running, you know, in our little our group, the Bears Man Cave, that we kind of have that secret Facebook group, mm -hmm. and men men will be struggling, and it's so, you know, Doug, it's so, isn't it true? But we got to take a break here in a moment. But men, when they're struggling, you know what they do? They hide out. 
They don't want anybody yeah. to know I got a financial issue, I've got a problem with pornography, or I've got a teenage kid that's acting out, or I've got financial issues, or things aren't going well with my wife, or whatever. The men hide. Yeah. And what we need to yeah. do is blow that that shofar, blow the ram's horn, and say, "Guys, help me." You know. Yeah. And, and if you lay down that groundwork beforehand with your buddies, the people that you're with, and you say, "Look, um, this is the type of man I am." I want, I want to know that's the type of man you are. You know, in, in many, many talks I've given, a uh, real quick story here. Um, no, no, don't, would, do, don't do the quick story. Let's do the long okay. version of it, but we got to take a break. Gotcha. We'll save hey, it for after. Yeah. Hey, Doug, what, what's the website that they can find you at again? BattleReadyStrong.com. Such a great name. I just remember the first time I saw that went to your website. I go, I got I to gotta meet this guy. This <laughs> is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you guys to go to BattleReadyStrong.com. You can also go to our website, DeepAdventure.com, and uh, you can uh, check out our our TV series, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. It's on Prime Video now. So women, you mama bears out there, you can sneakily put that on TV when that man in your life that you've been trying to have bring it to a deeper walk with the Lord will kind of walk through, maybe uh, pay attention. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men out there to go to deepadventure.com and join uh, the Bear's Man Cave. You know, cave, uh, the Cave of Adullam. King David's cave, you know, the, the men who gathered there to him when he was on the run, there were men, they, I guess they're basically misfits. You know, they, they might have been running from the law or maybe they're running from their mother-in-law or maybe they owed debt to someone, but they all showed up there and God formed them and they actually formed each other too into the valiant men of David's army. And so that's what the man cave is about. Go to deepadventure.com. Uh, you got to go there to join and then we make you a member of the, our secret Facebook group. And we've been doing this for several years now. We have Zoom video meetups every week or two or three or whenever we feel like different nights, different parts of the day. So there's always a time when you can participate. And then we challenge and encourage and exhort and inspire uh, one another. And we're there for each other when, when we need each other in prayer. We got Doug Berry with us. Uh, Doug, I cut you off last time because we were about mm. to ta talk story and I didn't want you to do the short version of it. And we, we were gonna talk about this new thing you've got going for men too, while right. kind of as, as we go through this. What's the new thing called again? 
Well, it's actually, it, we've got two different things we got going right now. One is an online monthly training. It's called Battle Ready Coalition. Yeah. And it's actually for men and women of all ages. But it Good focuses for you. On, it's much more of a body, mind, soul training. How do we get yeah. in better shape physically? How do we eat better? How do we exercise? Because the body's a temple. Hey, Holy man, Spirit, you want to maintain the temple. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the healthier we are, the better we can do the will of God because our minds are sharper. You know, we're, we're, we're dealing with better emotional balance and a lot of right. depression based right. on someone's diet lack of exercise right then also you're strong enough to do your job whatever that is you know as a husband father you know uh mother wife whatever it is you yeah. got children you got to even if you're a priest if you're physically healthier fitness to better. witness we call it fitness priest, to witness yeah fitness yeah, to but witness then the, then the mind needs to be trained as well we got to learn the faith develop the talents that intellectual God intellectual muscle we got to develop yes. that too not just Absolutely. spiritual as people like i, I pray I read the Bible. We need to have you yeah. go deeper into the, the the faith will stretch your brain a little right. bit, right? Oh, yeah. Read, yeah. Well, you think about the parable when Jesus talks about the king that comes to before the three servants and he gives them each the talents. This is the famous story of the king and the talents. And he gives the one five, the one two, and the other one one. And then he calls them back later and he says, what have you done with the talents that I gave you? How did you expand these? One doubled, made 10. The other doubled, made four. And they were, they were, they were thrilled because the king said good job now i'm putting you in charge of more what'd you do with the last one he said well i buried it because i knew you were a hard king and you demanded things you know you you reap where you didn't sow you know you gathered where you didn't plant and so i buried it here it is it's all back so he didn't abuse it he just didn't do anything with it okay he didn't go off and flaunt it and waste it like the prodigal son did with his father's inheritance but he buried it and didn't do anything with it and what the king says to him is you worthless lazy lout he said, you knew I was a demanding king. I gathered where I didn't plant, reaped where I didn't sow. You should have at least put it in the bank and given it back with interest, but you did nothing. So he took it away from him, gave it to the one with the 10, and then he threw him out. He said, have this one bound hand and feet and throw him out. And the point is, our Lord gives us abilities, talents, gifts. We have a responsibility to try to develop them for the Lord and to serve, serve God and help others. So body, mind, and soul is a training process with battle-ready coalition to help people be ready to spiritually be in shape, physically be in shape, and develop the skills, talents, and, and the faith. Know the faith. Know it. Learn it, because that only helps you in so many other aspects of your life so yeah, when you know the faith membership yeah how you know so often i've heard people uh, i've heard people talk on the tv or other places and i'll say that person's catholic <laughs> their mind and their conscience has been formed by their intellectual yeah. pursuit in catholicism the, the, the language the way they see things that's a catholic viewpoint and you can develop that one of the things we do doug is we know we do that we still do that ocean catechism every morning we nice. almost halfway through it again and just read the catechism once a day. Just work from the beginning to the end. Read a half a page a day and let the Lord instruct you. If you just start there, it's a it's a great place to start. And and you know I think about it, Doug. I don't know if you know this because I didn't really make it public till after it was it was over. But I had to fight. I had a battle with cancer this last year. Going, I didn't know. yeah, it was prostate cancer. I went through radical radiation, then radical infection, then radical infection, then and then because I was out of shape by I, the time I won the battle. I was out tandem surfing with my wife, and I brought her out of a tandem lift, and I just wasn't, my muscles weren't, I'm used to having my muscles do certain things. I ripped a bicep muscle, had to have oh. that reattached. But here's the thing. When I faced that battle, it cut me down. It was like a sword cutting me down. But I, I was physically strong and healthy at the time. Mm. Uh, you know, I was fit. I, I had a medical issue that I was able to deal with that and absorb the shock of that and survive yeah. through it and keep the momentum yeah. through it. And now we're working through the process of getting stronger and stronger, you know, every day. But if, you. if, if you're called to, if you're, if you, people go, I, I need, in, in the man cave, we, every year we do a tune up. And the first thing we start with is physical fitness mm. because that, that's a reality check. You know, if you're doing that right. And the discipline, right. Like right now during Lent, I, I, you may be hearing this and it's not Lent because we record this. I'm pushing away from breakfast every morning. I, I didn't give up coffee. That would be foolhardy. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, if you have that discipline to push away uh, bad carbs. I'm drinking my coffee right now. <laughs> I'm drinking my water. I passed the coffee stage today. <laughs> but, uh, but if you have the, the, the discipline to push away food, you probably have the discipline to push away pornography. You have the discipline to push away, right. to say no to things and say yes to things. And yeah. what's the other thing you got cooking? I mean, you're up, uh, to, we, you're up to no yeah, good. We, we have one other thing we put together. Uh, it's called the Battle Ready Emergency 
preparedness course. Oh, dude, I want to. This is so. Yeah, this is so cool. So necessary. Well, and this, too. Yeah, yeah, and this is something you know. Uh, like for example, here, I'm in Texas, and we just went through at the time we record this. We just went through a couple weeks back, a few weeks back, a historic storm that hit. Yeah, you brought it from Nebraska with you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, boy, no kidding. I tell you, because it's the sort of thing that we would experience every year in Nebraska. Nebraska got hit worse this year, but it, down here in Texas, but they we were ready. Very much they were ready. Nebraska. Yeah, they were ready. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And here's the thing: most people down here, they didn't have extra food or water stored up. In fact, a lot of people don't all over the place. No generator. Yeah, I mean, no. Uh, no generator. No backup power. No backup heat. No way to get around in the storm. Whatever it was, I had zero problem. My wife and I were covered. We were able to share some of our 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 what we had stored up with others a couple other families that we knew needed some help some assistance so we were able to assist them we were able to take care of ourselves my wife was covered i would say the woman on the other end of this ring is counting on me to have a plan Amen. spiritually and physically my job is to protect her make sure she's safe and and reasonably you know comfortable and so forth and so when that hit we were covered but we saw people, I mean, there are video clips out there of people down here in Texas who were outside of grocery stores. The grocery stores had lost power in some places. They were running off partially off of a generator. And you had two, three, four hundred people lined up outside. This is a day or two after the storm hit because they didn't have any backup at their home. Now, we put the battle ready emergency preparedness course together months ago before any of this hit here because we see natural disasters everywhere all right. the time. Yeah. But we also know that you can have a government upheaval. Let's look at this whole last year with cities burning like Minneapolis to Kenosha to Seattle. You need to have a plan. And we focus on five key things. One is that you have shelter, backup plan for shelter. You got your primary shelter and then backup shelter. Places you can go, people you build alliances and friendships with. Number two, food. Three, water. Four, defense. And five, medical. Those key categories, shelter, food, water, um, medical and defense and medical. And you, have, and you actually things. have a, a kit that you tell them to, to put together, I think. Oh, goes, yeah. it's it Basically, we have, if you get see, out if bag you or something, out, someone goes out and buys the course, you're going to get almost four, about four hours of video, manuals, printed manuals with detailed lists of things you can go get, access to them. We have links on our website. This has been something that many people have told us has helped them enormously start thinking this direction, like you and I were just talking situational awareness head on a swivel in a self-defense scenario spiritually physically but also when it comes to things like food water protection defense medical a lot of people don't have any of that and it leaves them behind the eight ball now i we want to say this bear go ahead because a lot of people will say well doug you're, you're trusting in man too much and not enough in god i'm going to draw up two particular <laughs> old testament passages one the ark and the flood okay god told noah prepare physically by building a physical ark physical food animals are coming on board because i got something coming and you're going to need to get this ready the second is saint joseph of the old testament pharaoh has the dream of the seven yeah. years the seven fat cows skinny cows and so forth and the wheat and all this joseph tells him what this means there's going to be a natural disaster called a famine and we need to prepare for the famine by storing up food building grain containers that'll hold it and it says in scripture that they came from provinces all outside of world. Egypt. Yeah. Everywhere throughout the world to come to Joseph, who was a man of God, who took steps on a natural level as well as a spiritual to be prepared to help save people's yeah, lives not, and move their hearts and souls. It's that old Catholic sort of not either or, it's both end. Correct. We're talking That's with du we're talking with Doug Barry from battlereadystrong.com. You guys already know that. I don't even tell you who this man is. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Howdy, folks. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Labor. It's a good and honorable thing to work and work hard. We're wired that way. I was raised in a fishing, logging, and farming town in Washington State where working hard was as common as breathing. Such work was just the rhythm of life for folks in my little village of Iwako. The only work I know that is as tough as fishing, logging, and farming is being a roughneck along with cement work and hanging sheetrock, both of which I have done on occasion, not very good at it, mind you. 
but fishing boats and canneries comprised most of my labor experience as a lad. Now, most folks wouldn't think being a Christian is hard work, at least from the outside looking in. In fact, some think Christianity is for the weak, and that's about as ignorant and dumb as stupid on a stick. Disciplining oneself to daily prayer and reading a good book, seeking to walk in greater obedience to Christ and behavior and attitude while humbling oneself before others, it ain't no cakewalk. Self-centered folks and wimps need not apply. The Apostle Paul wrote, forgetting those things behind, the successes and mistakes, we should press on towards the mark of becoming more like Christ. That term pressing on essentially means to work hard despite failure or opposition. Good thing is, you don't have to go it alone. The Lord's always present to help you out along the way, and will give you a swat on the butt to encourage you back out onto the field of play. Sides, working for Jesus happens to provide the greatest retirement plan on the planet. Mm -hmm. This is Dan Lavoon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to say, give a special shout out to you mama bears out there. Uh, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can become a mama bear. You can uh, participate uh, uh, in our ministry. And we, we know that. Uh, more mama bears are actually love our, are, are involved in our ministry than me, than men, but a little <laughs> bit more than half are women, because we know you women are praying for your men, and we pray and we thank you that you're praying for our ministry, and we'd love for you to become part of the mama bear. So go to our website; you'll find out more about that. We're talking with Doug with Doug Berry uh, from BattleReadyStrong.com. Hey Doug, you know with my in my in with my children, I had each of them get at least halfway to their black belt, and they trained in a combative art. And I know my daughter at one point said, I just hated you for that until one day she needed it. Mm. Did, does your wife know, uh, what, what have you taught, what does she know about just simple self-defense? Yeah, she, the, the thing I drill her in all the time when it comes to self-defense is eyes, throat, groin. Okay, right. I mean, I, I let her know if you're ever in a close, I mean, obviously the first step is to avoid the conflict. As Mr. Right. Miyagi said in one of the Karate Kid <laughs> movies, best block down your son is to not be there. Right, so that's right. You can avoid the situation, avoid the near occasion of sin spiritually, right. and physically avoid yeah. scenarios that yeah. are dangerous. But if you get in a situation where you're in, in the thick of it, you l learn how to use the hands, rake the face. I would say, ladies, go for the throat. <laughs> Yeah, go for the throat, go for the eyes. But if you rake that face, I would say collect DNA under your fingernails. Okay? Keep it there. Let's yeah. make it count. Okay. Right, right. You talk about mama bear, you've got those nails for There's a reason. There's nothing more so fierce than a mama bear. Yeah. You know, yeah. I lived in Montana. I had a cabin in Montana anyway. My son, Josh, Jeremiah, came in the other a few months ago, and he said, you know, remember how fierce those mama bears were? And it was interesting because mm -hmm. we just had started to make more of a uh, an outreach to our mama bears. But there's nothing yeah. more. There, don't think of a mama bear as some cuddly little thing, you know. No, but, you no, know, don't. It's no. so often when you watch a martial arts uh, 
the you know cinematic fight they never right. hit they never hit him in the throat i know they hit him in the, in the chin 50,000 times just one little right. extended knuckle uh, fist to the throat can yeah. is kind of a you know you can reach farther with an extended knuckle than a closed fist and you can it just enough May, it may ruin their lives or maybe enough for you to get away. But I think, yeah, women need to be trained too. And we go back to that fact that, you yeah. know, Cindy and I, we, we pray every morning the liturgy of the hour together. And the last thing we pray at night is the, is the compline. You know, we, we, that, that, mm-hmm. that's, that is preparing your wife for battle. Oh, yeah, hey, I, I want to change the subject for a second. Sure. I'm really digging on the fact that you work, you have four sons involved in your ministry, and I have mm-hmm. two. Talk about that, just whatever's on your heart. Uh, you know, um, I, I've been blessed to have, you know, five children, seven total, two miscarriages, but five living children. Mm-hmm. My daughter, who pretty much ran everything behind the scenes for seven years, and then she was uh, blessed uh, to be married and is a mother now and still helps me. In you got a grandkid? I want a grandkid. I, I have five five now five grandchildren wow, that's yeah. cool yeah well and three there are three miscarriages from between my daughter-in-law and my daughter so yeah i've actually have eight but you know, you know i tell right. you I, I have a grandchild in heaven too yeah there you go yeah yeah right. yeah yeah but i tell you that so my daughter yeah she spent many years helping me out behind the scenes with a lot of like you know bookings and so forth and a lot of the administrative stuff in the office and all and just a great idea she would help write pieces and so forth great natural writer and communicator but all four of my sons are involved uh my my one son jordan is a videographer so he shoots all of our stuff for brc my other son nate my youngest son is second camera uh he does editing for a podcast that i do with father richard heilman called the u.s grace Force. great podcast u.s grace force great u.s podcast. grace force yeah. yeah yeah we've had you on there and we got to get you back on yeah uh, my son dominic there. he runs my a lot of my social media behind the scenes my son zach he's a he's a writer does a lot of the writing for the work that we do for brc and and the battle ready emergency preparedness course and the website wow. so yeah all of them it's right yeah, i, it's lo- pre- and I look at your work. ministry and go where does he get the energy to do all this it's because you got four sons uh <laughs> stepping into the breach with you yeah, yeah, well, that, and, and, you know, you and I, I mean, we're getting up there a little bit. I think you're in your 60s now, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm said. getting close to 60. I'm, <laughs> well, I'm 56, so. Yeah. But, you know, I'm still working out, you know, three, four, maybe five days a week. Sometimes it's a 10-minute oh, workout. Sometimes no, it's, it's obvious, dude. You're, you're, you're in shape. Yeah. Well, and, and, you, and, you know, Bear, you know as well as I, it's, it's what you're putting in here, just like what you're yeah. putting in your heart through your eyes, your ears, right. your prayer life. But what you put in your mouth I always say this, and we put this in Battle Ready Coalition monthly training. This is a big part. Your mouth is not a dumping ground for anything and everything that tastes good. Just because it tastes good yeah. doesn't mean you should put it in your mouth. Right. All right? Donuts and, and, and soft drinks and all that. You, I mean, you know what? Hey, Doug, I got a pet peeve. Yeah. When you go speak to a men's conference, what do they serve the men in the morning? <laughs> coffee and donuts <laughs> don't you do, i just tell them look if you're gonna do that i'm not even gonna come you know yeah I, I would say look i have a donut once in a while but i'm also working out four or five days a week and the rest of my diet is like superfood green drink organic this yeah, and, and it's that. gonna put them to sleep and it's like the wrong virtue to i say you know God, fry up a bunch of bacon and just give them with. bacon to start this much yeah better than yeah donuts. just you know or do some intermittent fasting you know to kind of get the yeah the molecular structure of your body in better shape yeah but, no, but I, I and I went through something. I mean, I I didn't even know about your prostate cancer. God bless you. Thank God you got through that. Yeah, um, my wife. I was dying. My wife went I was, through that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, tell she you. had. She was there for me. I mean, like, ugh, you know. You know what? I can testify to that with my wife. Eleven what? years ago, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Eleven years ago. Oh my gosh, that's. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a degenerative disease, a chronic illness that you know you'll they say you have the rest of your life. Now I didn't take any medication. I took her for three weeks and then threw it out. And my wife, God bless her. She did all the research on, right. on really changing the diet. At one point, yeah. I had lost 50 pounds in about eight months. Uh, you know, I was weak. I couldn't do much. I was still trying to work out, but it was so hard. I got a relapse three years ago, ended up in bed for five weeks. I could not even get out of bed. I mean, it was, it was, I lost 25 pounds in a week. It was bad. Um, mm. it, it's in the same neighborhood as Crohn's disease and so forth. Right. But, I know. It's but rugged. by the grace of God and using the means that God gives us with good diet changes, exercise, and a lot of love and a lot of prayer from the people around me, I was able to, you know, by the grace of God, again, come through it. And, and now I feel, I mean, I feel great in general most of the time now. So, well, we, but, but it's part of our life. We have to deal with these things, but we got to deal with them the right way. 
You know, it's it's like like I was saying earlier, uh, the man cave every every January we have a meeting a week. We usually have one every couple of weeks or so, and we we go through a tune up of every area of our lives. The first nice. one is 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 is, is um, fitness, which is what you say, what you put in your mouth. Every athlete knows you are what you eat. Yeah, and and and, and sleep and, and and resistance training and the cardio. But we yep. put all that together, and it's interesting. You know, every guy that comes to the man cave. He, he's not expecting that the minute he gets there, he's going to go on a weight loss program, you know. <laughs> but a lot of the men do, you know, and yeah. they, and we encourage and we and we tell each other how, how to do that. But talk talk to me again about your sons, um, it, because it, you know I have my two sons, Shane. Shane is the, kind of the video genius, and and Joshua is the technical guru of our of our. And he builds all. You know, when you do the kind of productions we do, you need massive computers, you know. Right, oh, you know yeah. that, and my son Joshua yeah. builds those for us, saves us a lot of money. But um, it's just such a it, it. You know, I remember when my son Shane was um, working at a local public television network doing commercials. He was also working for a non-denominational church doing their videos. Or really, like the mega church of Hawaii, he worked there. Mm. But then I just saw this gift of his that was so obviously given to him by the Lord. So obviously, this video. And editing, it was his whole life. And I just was in agony. Lord, please, please use this gift. Please use this gift. And now, um, look at, we, we, won, we won a couple of, of awards for our, our, our TV show. And he's, and he's he, you know, he's kind of that, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. people think it's you and me that do all this. Yeah. They go, like one of the people said, hey, Shane, aren't you lucky you get to work for your dad? You know, your dad's opened all these doors for you. No, it's the other way around. Right, <laughs> their gifts. <laughs> we don't see yeah. them. It's their gifts, right? Yeah. That are really. Hey, I, I want to comment. I, I was on your show. I, 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 I yeah. was surfing for the first time ever yeah. in my life on yeah. your show. You taught me how to surf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. You were a good surfer, man. Well, that that episode hasn't aired yet, but it's it's getting there. Getting there. Oh, okay. I didn't even know if it, I, did, I hadn't seen it. Every time I kind of go out and peruse through your stuff, I hadn't seen it. Well, yet, we so. we we uh we do the. Uh, we we filmed like about seven seasons mm. when we had the same cast and crew together. Okay. Over three years, we just worked so hard, and now we're out doing the post production. I think our next season will come out. But yeah, you know, you were a good. It's very rare to see someone get up and. Well, you know, when you're an athlete, I mean, I'm not. I don't think I'm gifted as an athlete, but I am a good athlete because I love doing sports. So I. Sure. I do a lot of so when you're good in one area, it kind of translates out into yeah, the other. Yeah, it does. It crosses over. Yeah, which goes back to the virtues. We're talking with Doug Barry. Where can they find you again, Doug? Battle Ready Strong. Battle Ready Strong. Dot com. And if you and if you're wise, you'll subscribe to his newsletter. It comes out once a week, or how often does it come out? Um, we have actually we have several emails that come out usually yeah. every week. Usually yeah. once or twice, we put something out. And it's not yeah, just, just something. It's it, you've put some thought into everything that comes out. Yeah, we we've got we, there's a lot of purpose behind what we're doing. The yeah. people behind the scenes, my sons, my daughter-in-law. I mean, they they just do a great job putting stuff together. We got new my video channel, my YouTube channel, Doug Barry on YouTube, just Doug Barry. Um, also, we put a lot of you know, work into that, but uh, yeah, then the course Battle Ready Coalition and our, our preparedness course to help people be better prepared, body, mind, and soul, you know, the emergency preparedness course, all that can be found on battlereadystrong.com. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be back uh, with Doug Berry in a moment. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure we want you to go to my youtube channel bear wasnick and hit the subscribe button we got so much cool stuff there uh, when we're leading pilgrimages, we'll pop up videos while we're traveling. I have my Ocean Sunrise Catechism there. We have um, Cindy and I just having fun in the sun. We like to just kind of, it's just cool. Holy Spirit action plan stuff happens, and we turn on that video camera and load it up to YouTube or, or send it out live. And I know Doug Berry, our guest, has, a, has a, the Doug Berry YouTube channel, so we encourage you to just subscribe there as well. Um, Doug, I want you to talk to the man that just accidentally tuned into this show or – Maybe he's been tuning in, and it's kind of that. It's like there. There's a point when the the, the Holy Spirit doesn't bring condemnation; he brings conviction, though. Mm. And they're saying, "I need to make a change." Maybe it's their first time to give their life to Jesus, yeah. or maybe it's 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 like the, it's a time when they need to recommit or a, 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 in, to a life of virtue and a life with the, the Lord. I would like for you to talk that evangelism message the good news to this man and maybe this woman too who's listening and then lead them in a prayer of giving their lives to jesus well i tell you the first thing because my mind is like eight different things okay uh, you <laughs> know, one thing we're is, catholic <laughs> yeah exactly it's like, oh, i got a whole bunch of stuff to share i mean the treasure chest <laughs> chest the treasure chest is massive okay yeah um, don't wait for that angelic injection and what i mean that's a term i use a lot the angelic injection we're waiting you know, it's like, I know I need to exercise or eat better, but I just, you know, I'm just going to wait for God to give me the energy to do it. Oh, I need, I know I need to start praying more, read the Bible more, be, be more faithful. I know I need to get to confession, but I'm just going to wait for something to inject me with like, angelic injection. Boom. And now I'm animated and I don't even have to control it. It's like, no, no, you have to choose it. You have to mm. choose it. One of the things I always say in Battle of the Coalition, I've been saying for years is you need to own it, own it, make it yours. Mm. So, when it comes to you know my vehicle, for example, if I really care about it, I wash it, I get the oil change, I check top pressure, I mean, I'm gonna clean the interior, whatever it is, I care for something that I own. I own it and I maintain it and mm. I take the steps necessary to do that. If my soul needs to be maintained, and it does, I have to own that. So don't wait for some angelic injection to give you the energy to exercise or pray or go to confession it's on you. It's on you and me each personally. So that's the first thing is you need to not just sit around and think about it. You need to own it and take the steps to do it. Now, one little step, even if it's small, is a step in the right direction. Hey, hey Doug, Doug, yeah. if you're not getting stronger, you're getting weaker, right? The Lord's been just saying Correct. that to me again. So just taking that one step. When I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, one pedal stroke at a time. One yeah. pedal just took one That's more. You, and when I was training to get my first black belt, I remember my instructor kind of like almost sitting on my back while I was doing my 100th push-up, you know, pressing down. And yeah. he would say, you can do one more of anything. Yeah. And when I paddle across the Molokai Channel, one paddle at a time. So you're saying that first step. Well, yeah. I mean, I and then yeah, the next many step. years many years ago, I ran Pikes Peak Marathon. It's a 26-mile marathon up and down Pikes Peak Mountain. Now, I'm not a runner. I'm, I'm more weightlifter type. I did a lot of powerlifting when I was younger, martial arts, powerlifting, and so forth. But when I got older, I wanted to run a marathon to check the box and get it done to say, oh, yeah, I ran a marathon one day. And then I, so I ran a flat one in Lincoln, but you did, Nebraska. Yeah, but you ran up a mountain, and running down did, is yeah. harder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, once I ran the flat one in Lincoln, Nebraska, my cousin comes to me, and he says, hey, I got another one. I said, no, Mike, I've already checked that box. He goes, no, this is a Pikes Peak Mountain. 
Yeah. And I said, whoa, like 14,110 feet dude, elevation. But the altitude uh, starva oxygen starvation oh, alone. Man, yeah, some people. It just actually hurts finish. your lungs, right? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. And plus, they, they run it in August. And so it's like 70 degrees in the morning when you start. And it's like, it can be 30 on the top of the mountain. And mm. then by the time you get back to the bottom, it was 90, I think. So, mm. you know, your body's going through a lot up and down this mountain. But here's what I did. I had to look at the top of the mountain and I had to look at every single step along the way. Mm -hmm. So I, I use this as an example to say, look, guys, you've got to take the first step or you're not going to get up the mountain. Yes, you need to look at the top and realize that's my goal. Every my now goal and then, every now and then look at the top. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Dude, you don't do it all. You can't stare at it. You gotta be looking where you're going. Yeah, exactly. But you do have to know what you're aiming for. So right. I'm, I'm aiming for eternal life. Yeah. And I don't know when I'm going to die, but I know that along the way, every step, every rosary, my rosary sits on my desk. I've got, mm -hmm. I've got two rosaries on my desk. I never go out of the house without a rosary in my pocket. I've got two in my Jeep. I've got one by my bedside. I did two in my backpack that I travel with. I don't go anywhere without my firearms, my weapons, my rosaries, right? Mm -hmm. I don't go anywhere. And that's those are the steps that I take every day in my daily rosary. Every time I go to confession, that's another step towards the top, yes. which is eternity with God. Mm. So guys, don't wait. Pick up the rosary, pray it today. There are some who say, well, just pray one decade if you can't pray no. the whole thing. No. I say, wait. One decade's two and a half minutes. Yeah. What kind of man are we? We can't put 15 to 20 minutes. That's what I say, rotary. too. Exactly. Yeah I, yeah, I don't like that. I'm not that. That's like yeah. saying, well, you know, you want to exercise. Why don't you just walk into the weight room first? And then the next day you can actually pick up some weights. Well, you know what? You don't think, too, is I remember uh, Cindy and I were talking about this. My wife has a gr is just s tremendous stamina and works out probably, pro actually more than I do right now. But she's just, she's just. Not that she's obsessed with it. She just does things right. But we are talking about this the other day. We were hiking at Makapu'u Lighthouse down here. And um, the first, if you had that experience of the first three or four minutes, it's like, I can't do this. Oh, yeah. But then the blood, like when I was pedaling across the United States, that first pedal stroke of the morning is like, I'm not going to get that 90 miles in today. Mm -hmm. And um, as you do it, your blood flows, things start working, you're, and yep. you find you have more and more energy. And every athlete knows there's that time when you've really trained, when you, you're, you're pushing through that wall, and then all of a sudden it feels like you can run forever or like yeah. paddle forever. Yeah. And so those of you, what Doug is challenging you to is take the first step and then take, when, I, when I'm going up a steep mountain, Doug, I'll, I'll see the top. We've got some steep mountains here, these craters, you know. Uh, but I generally, I will just look down at the ground and I'll just count or, I'll, or, or say the rosary. You know, when yeah. I'm paddling. Yeah. I don't look at that. I'll see that goal every now and then, but I just go one step at a time when it's getting hard. Can you pray for that person right now and, and, and challenge them to take that first step and then to take the next yeah, one? But pray, because we need Let's God's grace to do this. Yeah, we do. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, we ask you please right now, anybody listening or watching this, who knows that you've put it on their heart, that they need that order and that peace, as we all do. We are created for order, for peace. Just as the body, every single human body is about 75% water. doesn't matter what you think about your body. You are created with about 75% water. You need to be hydrated. Well, spiritually, our souls need your grace, yes, need Lord. your love. Yes, we Lord. need you. doesn't matter who we are, where we are, what we think. The fact is we need you. We pray you, Lord, please pour your grace out upon anybody listening or watching right now who realizes, especially those, we all need this, but especially those, Lord, who are thinking, yeah, I got to take that step, but what do I do? Give them the grace to take that step, to pick up that rosary, to get to confession, to, to drop to their knees in prayer, in their living room, on, on the floor, in their kitchen, in their garage, wherever they are, and just say, Lord, right now, I need you. Give me the grace to take the right steps. Get my soul back in line with truth, and then give me the grace to follow that truth and live a faithful, strong warrior's life. And when I fall, Lord, and I will because we all do, give me the grace to not fall as far or as hard. Give me the grace to continue to fight the fight. And please, Lord, give us all that strength necessary to be faithful in every breath that we take and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, mm -hmm. may we accomplish this. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Son, the Holy name. Spirit. Father, you know, the, Holy Spirit. The, the Catholic way, Doug, is we, we, the Catholic way is to, is when there's someone who's making this first 
step or, or, or returning or is the Catholic way is to come alongside those people. We, we like we, my wife and I have a thing I mentioned you we were watching the Hobbit series. Yeah. It's an adventure, but they're not on there alone. You know, they're 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 oh. with each other. Yeah, and so and, they, and it's funny because you know you think about the beginning that when when um, in the Lord of the Rings portion of this when Gandalf says to Samwise Gamgee, "You, I want you to go with Frodo." You're right. He, ne- he needs a battle buddy, in other words. And remember, he there was a point when, when he when he said, and, and then then the, later on he said, "This is something you got to go alone." He said that to um, to um, Frodo. Oh yeah, then, yeah, yeah. But but yeah. then later on. Uh, someone tells him uh, that Sam's with him. He goes, "Good, yeah. good." Yeah, and yeah, and so yeah. this is what this is what Doug has done. There's a there's you can co- if you want to make this bold step towards going deeper with God, you need someone to come alongside you. And there's so many avenues for that with Doug's ministry. And you go to uh, battlereadystrong.com, and there's a there's a program that they can get involved with there. There's more than one. Yeah. Um, but reach out to, to Doug's ministry and and uh, and maybe find uh, you know there's that one brother in the Lord that, that there's someone in your life that God that God's uh, asking you to reach out to and uh, and walk find someone to walk along this journey with you know you, we we know we have that in our wives but you need men we have a new guy in our group uh, and then we got to break away but there's a new guy in the man cave Doug his name is Trace Chamberlain he started he's a he started a motorcycle group of iron workers that work in the oil fields down in Louisiana, Texas. Mm. And I and he's just he's on, on his way to becoming Catholic. And he's this nice. big gnarly biker. And I said, dude, we're gonna do it. You gotta start a podcast like now. Because he's so full of energy, you know. <laughs> but he's come to the man cave. Good. You know, and he and he knows it's iron that sharpens iron. That's the name of his podcast. So yeah, yeah. go to go to battleruddy.com and uh, check out what Doug's doing and and, and jump into it. Yeah. We gotta go. I appreciate it. I put, the last thing I wrote down here in my notes is and invite Doug to come back to the show. So I'll be sending you out a, <laughs> a letter soon. But we got to go. You know what we say in, in Long Ride Home? We yell out, Viva Cristo Rey. You want to do a shout with me? Yeah, you bet. Okay. Viva Cristo Rey! Viva Cristo Rey! Yeah, it's so funny. I have the men do that when we were doing a Zoom. I was had a big conference, you know, one of those Zoom conferences, and they're all in their yeah. houses. And I yeah. told them to yell that out, and I'm sure the neighbor's like, what happened? You know? <laughs> hey, we awesome. got to go, you guys. Uh, until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.